plastic. Plastic lands in our lives in 1907 as the first man-made material and quickly revolutionizes the entire industry of product design. An incredibly versatile material that can create unprecedented forms cheaply and rapidly. And soon, new variants started to emerge, taking its advantages to packaging, music, liquid containers, clothing. Even more importantly, it, it was crucial for the medical industry that has saved millions of lives. Plastic allowed the greatest and the greatest designers of all times to completely redesign objects that previously required complex assemblies of multiple parts, transforming them into smooth and sleek shapes that were not only simpler and faster to make, but also more exciting to use. Stating that design matters, and the way we see and feel objects influences the way we experience them, even in the most mundane task. And it was the legacy of the greatest designers and the large-scale industrial capacity of artificial materials that led to those products that are now, unquestionably, part of our everyday lives. And plastic started to scale up, reaching larger industries. With fiber-reinforced plastics, we could start reimagining cars, trains, planes, even architecture. In the 50s and 60s, we were getting ready to fly to the moon, and at the same time, dreaming about living in capsules, spaceships, continuous and orga organic shapes that came alive thanks to this magical material that we have just invented, plastic. Plastic was indeed fantastic. It let us imagine furniture and interiors that are smooth, colorful, aerodynamic, that made us leave the new era of technological progress right from our homes. But we all know what happened after. Scientists were aware of the problem of plastic pollution since the start, in the early 50s. But it's not until much later that we acknowledge that plastic waste will be part of our ecosystems forever. And the dream of the 50s and the 60s died finally on the, on the 90s. When the image of that world that we lived in colorful bubbles and space-looking buildings just vanished. And the modern movement, coming from industrial advances with steel, glass, and reinforced concrete, became the only vehicle towards modernity. Today, we're living a new technological era, the era of automation, where robots and other machines allow us to build faster, more securely, more intelligently, and efficiently. However, the most cutting-edge examples of architecture using this technology are lacking design methods that inherit those tools that we have finally in hands. And we must be doing something wrong, because the urgency to house an ever-growing population is becoming more and more relevant, while the lack of absorption of this technology in the construction industry is making it less and less productive. Architecture is, and has been for the last century, an accumulation of thousands of layers, a continuous assembly of differentiated parts. But in the early 2000s, we are asking a fundamental question. What if we could build buildings with no parts, with no assemblies? What if we could 3D print architecture? FDM 3D printing is based on a simple concept, depositing material layer by layer, guided by an, automat an automated machine that can follow a path described by a three-dimensional model. When the material is concrete, we can very quickly imagine how those worlds, walls and structures that were very tedious and slow to make with traditional technology could just magically emerge from thin air. And in fact, it's already happening. And houses where most structural parts are 3D printed with concrete are today a reality. But what if we could work with a material that has become unfortunately unlimited in our planet? that is just waiting for a large-scale application to be taken out of our ecosystem. We already print objects of incredibly complex shapes and textures with recycled plastics. What if we could scale up this technology towards printing furniture, interiors, and even architecture? Would this make us rethink design again? And as Panton created a completely new chair, thanks to a completely new technology like plastic molding, how can we reimagine what a chair is 
with a technology that allows us to materialize shapes and textures that we've never seen before. We can start opening our minds to new natures, with new aesthetics, with new functionalities, with new ways of blending into the world we inhabit. We can discover new concepts of modernity, empowering designers to explore those ideas that perhaps were simply impossible to make before. 3D printing brings an incredibly sore production chain from, from digital design to bringing that object to life in just a matter of hours. Without creating molds and using um, complication in, uh, complicated multiple machines to repeat a product over and over again. 3D printing is compact and versatile. One machine to create an infinite number of product variations. And we can radically change the way we interact with users, letting them decide on the products that are most suitable to their needs, that become theirs and only theirs. We can design objects that not only feature unprecedented shapes, but that also come together in novel ways, in novel ways to create larger structures. All from a compact technology that can be easily transported and deployed, creating those products we need where we need them, and even using local ways to build them. It's not too long ago when the whole world entered not only into an, a humanitarian crisis, but also a material one, with a shortage of medical supplies to help us fight COVID-19. It's then when everyone with a 3D printer started to print PPEs and other medical equipment to supply to their local hospitals and those who were trying to protect us. And the network of digital makers is growing fast. And as this was the key to alleviate uh, the effects of a de devastating crisis, in the long term, can also help us shift towards agile distributed manufacturing, producing more sustainably and radically reducing CO2 emissions coming from transport. And if we can use that network to create objects with the size, texture, and color that most align with our imagination, that best reflect the way we see the world, we can create entire environments that, as it was envisioned in the 50s and 60s, transport us to unexplored territories that help us dream about the future. And fill them with light, creating inexplicable reflections that shine through the surface of that material that was just waste in a previous life. If we can make modular micro factories that adapt to a growing or shrinking demand, that are adaptable to, to new conditions and trends with zero waste. If we can push this technology to create objects of three and a half meter high in just two days, and right after, jump to a completely different product without wasting time on readapting your technology. If we can give designers the tools to reinvent the most mundane objects that have surrounded us by centuries. If we can bring design and beauty to the most boring and banal products that we've never questioned, like a portable toilet or a door. We can start rethinking the way parts come together, the way they move, the way they make our environments change and adapt. We can start creating elements that were impossible to demold or that unique that were just not economically viable. Elements that are designed and built just for us. And that we can engineer to use just the material we need where it's needed. Optimizing the structures to be created faster and more efficiently. We can build concepts and ideas that can be applied to different parts of our buildings and adapt to a rapidly changing industry where circular life cycles for design and architecture are urgently needed to create, recycle, and create again. When 3D printing becomes larger, we can bring to life those patterns and textures that are not only evocative, but that also question the fundamentals of architecture. That combine the multiple layers that conform it, including furniture, structure, cladding, into multifunctional building blocks that we can rapidly assemble into larger buildings. Buildings that we can customize with the forms and functions that we feel our own. Houses that become products designed and built just for us. When 3D printing becomes larger, cleaning our landfills and oceans becomes faster. Carbon emissions become lower. Building 
becomes safer and more efficient. Design, design becomes just limitless. Thank you.